not going to do it. You know what? I, I want to I get closer to the Lord. And you know what? I need to get rid of all the outside distractions. And Lord, I, I need this. You know, it's not that, 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 I'm, that I'm having to do it, but it's because I need it and I, and I want to. Uh, if you would go with me this morning to the book of Matthew, starting in chapter 3 and verse 16. I want to read from verse 16 to chapter 4 in verse 1. Hallelujah. And I want you to see something very cool here. You know what I mean? I, I started reading this in, you know, in verse 16. And we're going to read 16 and 17. And then verse 1 of chapter 4. In verse 16, the word of the Lord reads, it says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Verse 17, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased and verse 1 of chapter 4 says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Immediately. This wasn't a process. You know, and we have to understand, you know, a lot, a lot of we, we watch these movies and we and, and one that gets me is the one that they show the life of Jesus when he was a kid, which is so unbiblical because there's no account and there's no record of any kind of miracles or anything that he did. And people watch that garbage and they get intrigued and they believe in nonsense. Amen. It's a lie from the devil. You know, right here, the scripture tells us. That he came before John the Baptist. He didn't even start his ministry. He didn't even do anything up until this point until he received the Holy Ghost. Amen. He came and he had to be baptized and then he received the Holy Spirit. And then he started his ministry yeah. that God had called him to do. Why? Because he had to live a life very much like you and I as he was growing up. Why? Because he had to be in the flesh. He had to resist all temptation. He had to resist everything. You know, and, and the Spirit of God was upon him from time to time. Just like as we read through the Old Testament, you know that, you know, the, the Spirit of God never dwelt in an individual until after the day of Pentecost. Amen. But the Spirit of God dwelt on individuals periodically. Right. You know, from time to time, he would rest on people, on prophets and stuff like that. And he would rest on people periodically, but never indwelt in people until after the day of Pentecost, when Jesus gave us the promise of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And even at this time, the things that Jesus did, you know, as he was growing up, nothing happened with power until he received the Holy Spirit. And it was on this day after he got baptized that he received the spirit of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Just like many, you and I have received the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 13, verses 2 and 3. Amen. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Fasting and praying. Now I want you to understand something here as well. And we'll get into that as, I, as we read the, the next verse that I want to read. But um, fasting has become religious. That's right. Fasting has become a ritual That's right. in the church, just like the Sanhedrin, just like the Pharisees. You know, Jesus, you know, they, they told them, they said, when Jesus was with, was with them, they said, how come your disciples do not fast and we fast? And he plainly said, because I'm with them. But he said, when I leave, he said, then you're going to have to fast. 
See, now many, many people don't practice fasting these days. Fasting is not, you know what I mean, something, you know, like, like we're doing now. Fasting is, is, is restraining from food. That's right. That's right. It's restraining from food. That's what fasting really is. Right. From, from not eating food and just drinking water. That's what true fasting is. Yes, is. You know, we might be doing a technology fast, staying away from technology and praise the Lord, you know, but that's to open up our eyes and to allow God to take control of us so that way we can get into His Word, that way we can pray, that way we're not doing all this searching and doing all this stuff, people calling us, Facebooking and all this stuff, because it's garbage. It's garbage. But a true fast is staying away from food. And right here, they fasted for the people. And they prayed and laid hands on them. And then they sent them out on their way. Why? Because how many of us will fast for our church members? Amen. For our brothers and sisters in Christ, man. I mean, I mean fast, like, like for two, three, four days. Fasting. You know, when somebody's going through something, and we don't even have to go up to them and, 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 and talk to them and say we can see by the fruit and everything that's on the outside that, that something's going on with an individual. But to take it up with the Lord and say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to fast for this person. I don't know what they're going through, but I know they're troubled, Lord God, and I want to stand in the gap and I want to fast for breakthroughs. Amen. Many of us want to go up to people and, you know, Encourage them and lay hands on them. Yes. When our lives are in shambles and in a mess. That's right. That's right. We want to go lay hands on other people. We want to go give other people advice. And our, our, our life, ourselves are all messed up in, in, in a wreck. You know, how are we to give people advice if we're not praying and fasting? And if we're not on, on a stable ground, you know what I mean? Firmly planted, serving the Lord, serving Him. Serving Him with all our heart. With everything that we are being disciples. Amen. Go with me to Matthew chapter 9 verses 14 through 15. This is what we're going to read here. Watch. Yes. 13, uh, 14 through 15. Hita. Praise God. And it says... Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? The big question mark after and he says, And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the day will, be, will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. We know that he went to go be with the Father. Now is the time for fasting. Amen. To mourn. Yes. To weep. Yes. Man, a lot of us, we mourn and we weep over the wrong things. Right. How much do we love the Lord? Right. Man, we'll cry, over, cry more over a stubbed toe than we do over the things of the Lord. Right. Man, we'll cry over things being left in the refrigerator that are going bad than, than crying over somebody out there that's, that's w w without. That's right. You know, we, we, we do so many things that are backwards and we don't even realize it. A lot of times we become more of a hindrance yes. than a help. That's right. That's right. You know, we see all these homeless kids out here and they're coming from Denver and all over the place. That's right. And we're more of a hindrance to them. Why? Because they have a home to go to. But they choose to do drugs and alcohol and they have somebody giving them a handout and yet they don't go back home. Why? Because they don't have to. That's right. That's right. Instead of calling the cops on them for trespassing, yes. instead of telling them, don't come around here no more. You don't, you're not welcome here. Why? Because they have no intention of wanting to change. They just want somebody to feed their habit. And you might disagree with me on that, but if you've never had a, d a drug addiction, then you don't understand where I'm coming from. That's right, that's right. I was addicted to drugs. I was out there on the streets. I know. But for us that never had that, we don't understand that lifestyle. That's right. We don't understand what they're trying to do. So you can shake your head and be mad and, and disagree all you want. But guess what? Unless you've ever had an addiction and you've never been to that spot in your life, then you don't know where I'm coming from and you don't know what they're going through and what they're doing. They're trying to get a handout. 
I was there. My parents didn't want me at home when I was in, addicted to drugs. They kicked me out. Why? Because I didn't want to follow rules. I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to do chores. I didn't want to get a job. I wanted to take and not give. And see exactly what they're takers. They're not givers. They want to take. And when they're done taking and there ain't nothing else to give, then guess what? They're on to the next house. They're off to the next spot. It took me going to prison, getting everything stripped from me to where my family finally said, we've had enough of giving him a handout. Call the police. Get him in jail. Why? Because I know he has a warrant out for his arrest. I'm tired of giving him a handout. He has to get flat on his face and he's got to go somewhere where he doesn't have no help. And he has to rely on Jesus. I want to talk to you about fasting today. You know, fasting is a, a physical exclamation point at the end of the sentences. True fasting is an, es what's an exclamation point. Hello? Amen. It means pay attention, wake up. I'm saying so. Hello? An exclamation point. It's something to pay attention to. And that's what a fast is. A fast is to get your attention. It's to get us to pay attention to what's going on. You know what? I need you, Lord! Exclamation point. I want you, Lord! Exclamation point. I long for you, Lord! Exclamation point. You are my treasure! Exclamation point. I want more of you! Exclamation point. Oh, for the days you would return! Exclamation point. Come, Lord Jesus! Exclamation point. When a lot of times we're fast, we're like, man, I'm hungry. Or, oh, man, this and that. No. You know what? It's wanting more of the Lord. Amen. You know what? I need more of you, Lord. And that, that exclamation point at, at the end of it gives it that much more meaning. Amen. You know what? That you desire it more. It means something to you. You know, it's not just that you're doing it because everybody in the church is doing it. You're not just doing it because that's what you've been taught or that's what you read. You're doing it because you want, you need something from the Lord. See, the heart is longing. We are putting our stomach where our heart is to give added intensity and express our longing or our ache for Jesus. You know, you're, you're switching the role. You're putting that heart where your stomach is or you're putting the stomach where the heart is. You're, you're switching it. And you're longing for Jesus, man. Not for Mickey D's. Not for Taco Loco. The crazy taco, man. And we go eat there. Who knows what they have in those tacos? I know those people. Yee, man. We fast to express our longing or our ache for all the implications of Jesus' power in the present moment that isn't completely realized. I don't understand, Lord. So I'm going to fast so that way you can give me understanding, Lord. I don't understand what pastor was preaching today behind the pulpit. I never heard it brought forth like that before. Lord, I'm going to fast. Why? Because I need discernment. And I need you to lead me into revelation. Lord, bring me some scriptures, Lord God. After the hundred that pastor already gave us. Give me a hundred more to go with it. Huh? Man, Lord. Why do we do what we do? I don't want to do what everybody else does just because they're doing them off of implication or pulse. I want to do them because I'm being led by your spirit, Lord God, by your spirit. We want to see people healed. We want to see people saved. And we want to see marriages redeemed. That's why we fast. Man, we fast because we want to see those things, man. We speak about them. We tell people, yeah, I'm praying for you. But are we fasting for that marriage? Man, somebody that's going through a divorce, man, are we fasting against that divorce, man? Are we fasting that, that the Lord will begin to help them too, not to be so selfish that they would die to self and put God first and, you know, that He would be the center of it and that He would strengthen that marriage and put it back together? You know, we'll tell people be healed in the name of Jesus. Are we fasting? For that healing 
as a church or even individually or as a small group together collectively calling some brothers and sisters and saying, yo, sisters over here, or brothers over here, and we need to fast. They're in the hospital. We need to fast right now. And we need to fast until they come out. We need to fast until they come home. Fasting for this youth. Fasting for these young children. You know, the Lord has been showing me stuff through, through this technology fast, you know what I mean? And a lot of times we have it backwards. You know, we focus a lot on the youth. And we baby the younger ones. You know, and how many, they're getting bullied in school. And yet they don't know who they are in Christ Jesus. And these little ones should know who they are in Christ Jesus. They should know that he that is in them is greater than he is in the world. And that way when they become a teenager, you know what? They already know how to stand. Amen. They know how to stand up for themselves. You know, handle their emotions. Amen. Man, yesterday was a bad day for me. And I told you, I don't go to no shrinks. I don't take no medication or nothing like that. But yesterday, man, my mind was playing tricks on me, man. I was contemplating suicide yesterday. I was all depressed. I was down and out, man. I didn't want to, I didn't want to talk to nobody. I just wanted to lock myself in a room. I felt aggravated and, 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 and irritated. But I know who I have to go to. Man, I had to tell my wife, I said, just pray for me, but I'm going to go up into the room for a little while and I'm going to go pray to the Lord. Why? Because I need the Lord to, to heal me, to heal my mind, and I need Him to speak to me and, and to, to give me that, that revelation. Amen. You know, and I was up there for a half hour, 45 minutes, and I, I came down a, a new man. I came down and my mind was healed. You know what? And I was ready and I was happy again. It wasn't some blue and little yellow purple pill that did it for me. It was the power of Jesus Christ. You know, and we all deal with these things. All of us, but we don't know how to handle them. You know, everybody puts a label on something bipolar and all this stuff. You know what? Pills ain't going to do it for you. Fasting and prayer. Mom, fast for me. Why? Because I'm feeling crazy. Mom, fast for me. Well, you're going to fast with me. We're going to fast against this, this demonic force. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And for the power of God to work in our lives. That's right. That's right. You know, even today, it's a hard day for me today. Yes. Man, you know what? I, I, I missed my older daughters most of their lives. Yes. Everything. You know, from, from, from school and special events and all that stuff. You know what I mean? And today's a, a very important day for, for my younger daughter, man. Amen. State competition for gymnastics. Amen. You know what? I was torn because, you know what? I knew, I knew that, that I had to be here for, for the flock. Yes. You know, that God called me here, but at the same time, you know what I mean? I, I wanted to be over there. And I know many individuals who would have went over there or did whatever they had to go do instead of putting God first. Right. You know, it's a tough one. Dying to self. Dying to self. Dying to the flesh. Yeah, the flesh wants to go over there. The flesh doesn't want to miss it. And it hurts and it's hard. But you know what? I know that you guys need me too. And God needs me here. Why? Because He called me here. Just like He called you here. I also want to say that fasting does something else for us as well. It exposes latent idolatries. Latin. Latin is something that's hidden. That's what fasting does. When we're not being medicated by food, what comes out of our heart? When we're not being medicated by drugs, we're not going to be medicated by food, when we're not being medicated by TV and social media, when we're not being medicated by the internet and all this stuff, you know what? what, is our, what what's coming out of our heart? You know, you never have a chance, and I, and I was thinking about that this whole time. You know, you never have a chance to think because you put on the TV right away. That's right. That's right. We walk into the door. What, what's the first thing we, the first thing I usually do is I walk in the door, I put the TV on. I don't even have to watch the TV, but I just put it on. 
You know, getting on your phone, whatever, checking emails, you know what I mean? Getting on Facebook, searching Facebook to see what everybody else is doing so that way you don't got to worry about how you feel. You know, what's going on in our heart? How do we feel? You know, anger. A lot of people, you know, that's, uh, food is a big thing. I want you to understand that food, man. We, we, for me, so a lot of people are, you know, they're, 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 that's what they go to. When you're happy, you go eat. When you're sad, you go eat. When you're angry, you go eat. When you want to celebrate, you go eat. You know what it's? Eat, 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 eat. And the, and the Lord warned us about this in Scripture. You know, lust, the need for television, more and more of it. People need to know what is at the bottom of, of all this stuff. And the only way to find the underlining things that's going on is to fast. Is to stay away from the TV. Is to stay away from lust. To stay away from the internet. To stay away from all these restaurants. To stay away. You know, we need to eat to live, not to live to eat. You know what, we're, we're seeing all these places like Indonesia and all these places that are running out. They don't have water. They don't have water and, and we're shipping the water that we have to them so that way they can have water. What's going to happen when we run out of water? Which brings me back to an old movie when I was in the world. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. With Tina Turner and all them. Mal Gibson. The Road Warriors. What was their prized possession? Water. It wasn't gas. It wasn't oil. It wasn't jewels. It wasn't that. It was water. And the only people that had that water were the ones that were up in the, in the, in the top of the mountain. And they hardly even gave any to the people. And the people were down there crying for just a drop of water. Just give me a drop. Fighting and killing each other over water. Water is our most precious resource. The water. The water. We can't live without it. The spirit. We can't live without it. You know, I think Job was basically a good man. But at the bottom of Job's life was latent sin. A lot of us, we've never read Job like that before. We see that Job had everything taken away from him, that he was a godly man, but underlining it all, I believe that God was trying to show him something. And it was latent sin. It was sin that was hidden, a sin that needed to be exposed. Latent means something hidden or concealed. Hidden or concealed. The Lord's trying to expose hidden things in us or things that are, 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 are concealed. You know how many of us, you know, that we've suppressed things? In our life. Maybe we were abused when we grew up. So we suppressed it. So that way we wouldn't have to think about it. And when certain things come up in our life. We don't understand why we react the way that we do to certain things. It's because of latent sin in our life. Something has been suppressed or concealed. See when God took away his health. He took away Job's health. And he took away his children. He took away his wife. He took away his riches. He took away everything that he had. Why? Because he was comfortable. He was comfortable and he had everything that he had. And the only way for God to expose that stuff was to take it all away from him. It was a horrible and forced fast from children and his house. And Job got bent out of shape. He said some things for which he had to later repent of. I find that if we go without food for 24 hours, my, oh my, exclamation, exclamation. 24 hours? Now, what about just one meal, pastor? Can I just pick and choose? No, your name's not Susie. Huh? And you can't picky choosy. You know, was exposed of our hearts toward our wives and our children and even those around us when you abstain from food. Hey, you know what? People, when they don't eat, man, they get that crazy look on their face. Like ravenous animals. Huh? They don't eat. And then the ugly comes out of them. Why? Because everything annoys them. 
The kids are being too loud. They're running around. The husband doing whatever he wants to do. The wife doing whatever she wants to do. And every little the dishes or a little piece of crumb on the floor. You know, all kinds of things annoy us. We don't like how people talk or what they say or how they smell like or what they look like. And everything annoys us. That stupid driver. We're going to the store. Why is he pushing his brakes? And why is he turning? Why don't he turn on his signal? The Lord's trying to expose our hearts. You know what's inside of us. That's why it's important for us to fast. Amen, amen. Because the Lord wants to expose all that nastiness. All that latent sin that we've covered up. That, that we hold on to. And the Lord wants to expose it. So we can give it to Him. So that way we can grow closer to Him. Amen. That's right. That's right. Ooh, man. Man. Fasting is a is apostate expression of longing and prayer, but also exposes the negative conditions of our heart so that way we can deal with these things as they come up. A lot of times we don't deal with them when they come up. We roll with them. And we stay angry all day. Or we stay aggravated all day. Or, you know, just a lot of things and we hold on to it instead of, you know, right away we Whoa, Lord, is that inside of me? Okay, Lord, you know what? I need to give that to you right now. Why? Because I don't feel good inside. You know, fasting, this technology fast is beginning to expose the things that I have wrong inside of me. Not only inside of me, but in my head. And I don't need some doctor to tell me that I, I'm, 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 that I, that I got this or I got that. You know what? An emotion is an emotion. If you feel angry, you're angry. If you feel sad, you're sad. If you feel depressed, you're depressed. If your emotions are up and down and all wild, then guess what? That's something that they call bipolar. One minute you can be happy and one minute you can be sad. But are we taking that to the Lord? Or are we self-medicating with food or with pills or with TV or with something else? <coughs> Go with me to Matthew chapter 4. We're going to read verses 2 through 4. And I want to show you Jesus exposed and showed us what, what, what we are to do through true fasting. And he says, and when he had fasted, now I want you to understand now, he just got baptized. He just received the Holy Spirit. And immediately he went into the wilderness. He wasn't out somewhere else. He was in the wilderness. And he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. In the wilderness. And he says, and afterward, he was hungry. Híjole, hungry. Next verse, and he says, now, when the tempter came to him, Satan, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Not the bread, not the physical food, but by the word of God. Man shall not live off of bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. See, the enemy uses food to entice us rather than us going to the Lord in prayer and fasting and using the word of God. We go to food. Instead of going to the Lord in prayer, where do we go? We go to food. When we get mad, we go to food instead of the Lord. When we get happy, instead of going to the Lord, where do we go? We go to the food. Everything is going to the food. And right here, the enemy, the very first thing that the enemy enticed him with, it wasn't with riches, it wasn't with anything else. The very first thing and the most difficult thing have a prob people have a problem with is with food. Why? Because food is a comfort and we go to it, man. Why do you think it's so much easier for people like in Indonesia or out there in these third world countries that don't have nothing? Why it's easier for them to get baptized in the Holy Spirit and to get conformed and all that stuff in, 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 in Africa and all these places and have these experiences that they have for a lack of food. 
a lack of resources, man. Either they get a hold of the Lord and they let the Lord take care of it, or guess what? They stay all messed up and mixed up. Americans don't have that problem. Every corner, every refrigerator, every convenience store, candy bars, chips, all over, energy drinks. And we don't understand what, what's going on and what we're doing to ourselves. I want to give you some facts. There's over 70 million adults who are obese. 35 million men and 35 million women obese in America. In America. There's 99 million who are overweight and 45 million of them are men and 54 million of them are women. In America. I want you to know what obesity, what it causes. A lot of us don't understand what, what, what obesity, it causes more than just this high blood pressure and all this stuff. And I'm going to show you right here that obesity causes diabetes, which run the risk of amputations, heart disease, strokes, blindness, kidney disease, high blood pressure, uh, circulatory nervous defects, heart to heal infections, impotence, and much more. And much more. The very first thing that Jesus was tempted with. The enemy tempted him with food. The very first thing. The very first thing that the enemy tempts us and entices us with is with food. And we fall into it every single time. And it's the most powerful one. Why? Because it destroys our health. It destroys us. It'll kill us faster than anything else out there. It'll kill us faster. It causes hypertension, heart disease, which kills 600,000 people a year, respiratory disorders. It causes cancer. It, it is believed that 90,000 people die to cancer related obesity every single year. It causes Alzheimer disease, kidney disease. It causes suicide. It causes liver disease. It causes sept septic emia. It causes all these things. Food it causes these things in us. Many of us have had loved ones that have died from many things, and we think it's, 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 it's hereditary. It ain't hereditary. You know what? Mexicans eat the way they do because that's the way Mexicans eat. <laughs> Man, they don't know no better. Como que one tortilla? I want 12 tortillas. <laughs> and yo quiero los tortillas quemados. I want them quemados. Why? They're burnt, and burnt on the tortilla causes cancer. <laughs> Shman. <laughs> All these things that we see that we don't... And we do it to ourselves. And the, and the enemy is just sitting there watching and laughing. Right. Tell, hey, didn't I tell you to turn these stones into bread? We deny the Lord over some food. Right. We're going to go back to Matthew chapter 4. We're going to read verses 5 through 7 now. Same, yeah, just go. We're going to read verses 5 through 7. It says, Then the devil took him up into the holy city. And he set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. He shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Amen. You know, I know we have that scripture. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And we take that out of context to where we think that we're muscle men or superheroes. Go stand in front of a car. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And you get ran over. Huh? <laughs> I ain't never ice skated before, but I can do all things. You go out there and break a hip, an ankle. You can't do all things. You think you can do all things. And the devil wants you to think that you can do everything. But he wants to deceive you. 
And guess what that is when you think that you're all fun, you could do all things, you think you're all holier than thou. You know what? You get yourself into some financial troubles or whatever. Oh, the Lord's going to get me out of it. No, He ain't. You better pray and fast that He gives you some extra hours at work to start paying down that debt. That's right. That's right. But He didn't get you in that debt. Why? And you can't entice Him and expect Him to get you out of your messes like that. You know what? He's not a figurine on top of a shop that you could just call on and, and rub His little belly or the magic lamp. This ain't Aladdin. Give me my three wishes. Lord, I wish, I wish, I wish. Como que wish? Start serving me, he says. Huh? Start serving me. See, he tempts us to make us think that we're unstoppable. I ain't got to go to church. I can go to church whenever I want to go to church. I ain't got to pay my tithes. I don't got to read my word. I don't got to fast. I don't got to do this. I don't got to do that. I don't got to do that. We begin to think that we're somebody that, that we ain't even, that God didn't even create us to be. That's right. That's right. By putting God to the test and by saying things like, if you are really God, that you will get me out of this, uh, this will prove to me that you are who you say you are. You know, that was my big one right there. In jail. Oh, God. If you're really God in my life, then you will get me out of my trouble. Thanks for the grace and mercy. God got me out of some troubles. But you know what? That was putting them to the test. And I'm not supposed to be doing it. It says, right, and it was written, you shall not tempt the Lord. I was tempting God. That was an abomination on my heart, my ignorance, because I didn't know any better. Because I had somebody telling me, just call on to the Lord. Some ignorant person told me something and I believed in his ignorance and I started calling on him from the jail cell instead of listening to a pastor who gave me the full word and said, hey, you know what? Don't test him like that. You better mean it. So I know you're a real God and I know I'm here for a reason because I committed some crimes and I'm not asking you to bail me out of this of, of my crime, Lord God. But what I'm asking you is to change me. To change me so when I get out of here, I'm not the same person I was before. Amen. To give me the strength and the ability to, to not go back to drugs and alcohol. Amen. To be set free. But we test him. Oh Lord, if you just bring him back. Lord, if you do not, nah, leave him out there, Lord. That's where you have him. Let your will be done, not mine, because I want him right here. But you have him out there. And Lord, right now, you take everybody's hands that are putting it in the pot too. Why? Because they're stopping what he's trying to do. Back to what I said about all these, these kids and all these homeless people coming from Denver and everywhere else. Yeah, we're all guilty. We have compassion. We want to help them. But are we really helping them? When they run out of no other places to go, guess where they're going to have to go? With their tails tucked in between their legs, back home. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. It's cold outside. All right, well, you know what? You're sorry, but guess what? There's rules. Amen. And if you don't like those rules, go back out there in the street until you can follow rules. It's different when we're dealing with drug addicts. I want you to understand that, okay? I come from a drug addict's perspective. If those aren't your kids and those aren't people that you know, then it's a different perspective. But if they're dealing with drugs and alcohol, you need to get firm. Amen. You need to listen to what your pastor's telling you. We got we to gotta get a hold of this stuff. We got to fast for them. You know, we say things, if you are really God, then do this for me. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Lord, you said. Huh? Father, you said. Man, you see so many of these Christians out there who are not even serving the Lord, but yet they want to still quote the promises of God. If you're for me, who can be against me? Tell me you're against yourself. Why? Because you're not even standing on his side. But yet you want to stand on his promises. Man, I see so many people do that. I say, oh, Lord, help them. Help them. You know what? God doesn't owe us anything. It's the other way around. We owe him everything. Exclamation point. 
Exclamation point, exclamation point. We owe him. He don't owe us nothing. No, he already did it. He paid the price for us on the cross of Calvary, man. Now we owe him. We owe him our life. Why? Because it's because of him we're going to be able to go to heaven. It's because of him we could go into the Holy of Holies. It isn't because of anything that we did. It's because of him. And a lot of people, they got it backwards. Oh, when I want to. Oh, if the Lord's willing. Man, I hate that thing, man. That came from a Hispanic background, too. Si Dios quiere. Si Dios quiere. Pero tú no quiere. Huh? Si Dios quiere. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, church. He wants to. But we don't want to. We don't want to give things up, man. We don't want to commit, man. We don't want to, we don't want to change. Right. Little by little. Oh, when the Lord's ready. So the Lord's been ready. He died two over 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary to deliver you from your addictions, from your strongholds and your bondages. Yes. Cuando tú quieres. Huh? Shman. I don't know why. The Lord's not ready. Yeah, he's ready. You're just stubborn. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Exposing the heart and fasting. Lord, take away my stubbornness. Yes. I'm stubborn. Yes. I'm telling you, as your pastor, I'm stubborn. Amen. My whole family's stubborn. We're, we're raised that way. We were raised stubborn. Some of us more than others. And we're just stubborn, man. And the Lord wants to take that from me. And I thank God for this technology fast because he's showing me things in my life that have been latent sins that need to be exposed. And that way I can give it to him. Tell him, you know what, Lord? Take this stubbornness away from me, Lord God. Yes. You know what, Lord? Take this, 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 this suicidal thoughts from my mind, Lord God. Lord, take, take, take all these, these, these depressive thoughts from my mind, Lord God. Take this anger from me, Lord God. Take selfishness, Lord God. Take it. Take it all, Lord God. Why? Because it isn't about me. It's about you. And you're trying to change me. Why? Because you love me. Because you love me so much that you don't want me to be like this. You want to change me and heal me. But until I let go of that latent sin, until I fast and trust in you, and understand and comprehend and begin to know who I am in Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. You know what those things are? Spiritual things. I'm more, than over, I'm more than an overcomer through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. Lord, I can overcome this by, by your strength, Lord God. I can overcome depression. I can overcome anxiety. I can overcome guilt. I can overcome shame. I can overcome all this stuff through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Not Eminem song, blue and purple, yellow pills. Huh? That's right. Reach it. Man, there's heroin. You know what? Drug dealers, they know what, they know what to do. Yeah. And where, you don't see them out there in the rich neighborhood. Yeah. Where do you see them at? Chicanos. You see them out there in, 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 the, in, the, in the less fortunate where the Chicanos are out there. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. You see them over there where all the tortillas quemados are at and the frijoles and rocks. That's it. Yeah. No, I'm going to take it to them. Why? Because they don't know how to handle it. Huh? And they go and they start, they start catering it out there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, <laughs> it's the truth, though. It's the truth. Why? Because those rich people, even though they might be getting high and doing whatever they're doing in secret, guess what? They ain't letting you in their neighborhood. They don't have no dope dealers standing on the corner yet driving in their neighborhood. They got neighborhood watch with radars. I just seen a lowrider coming through here with big rims. Get him out of here. Here comes the police right away. What are you doing here, sir? You're out of place. You got any drugs or weapons in your car? Get out of the car. Put your hands behind your back. Let's go to jail. Man. Again. Revolving door, probation for five years again. I can never get out of this, man. It just keeps happening. That's right, that's right. Shh, man. You know how rich you are in the Lord? Yeah. 
Man, you could live in the ghetto, but you could be so rich in the Lord, highly favored. You ain't got no dope people coming to your house. You ain't got nobody coming to break into your house while all the neighbor's houses are getting broken into. Your house ain't getting broken into. Why? Because they know already. You mean business. Sister Francis is coming out with pierdas and sticks. I don't care who told you to, you could come over here. Get out of here. It's in my house. Huh? <laughs> man, we got to get serious for the Lord, man. Get out of here. And don't you come back here. Why? Because next time I ain't going to tell you. Next time I'm going to throw something at you. And if that don't work, guess what? I'm calling the police and I'm coming up with false accusations. Huh? You want to be a help to somebody? Well, help them. Put them in jail. They ain't doing nothing out here in the streets. They ain't doing nothing. They're just wasting their time. Get their butts in jail. They want food. They want a warm place to stay. They get three hots in the cot in there. Send them to jail. They're trespassing. They broke into my garage. Huh? That's right. They broke into my car. Mm-hmm. They're dirty in my yard. Yeah, yeah. They're dirty in my yard. Man, I don't even own dogs in my my yard. Smells like dogs are all over here, right? Because they're peeing all over the place. That's right. That's right. Get rid of them. You'll be more help to them in jail than you would do trying to give them a handout. Why? Because they're addicted to drugs. Man, they need rehab. And I'm not talking about a worldly rehab. Why do you think so many people leave Pastor Ray's men's home? Because they don't want to change. They're going in there thinking that it's a, a Jesus saves or a salvation army or something like that. Where they're coming in just to have a place to stay and to have meals and clothes. When that's not what it's for. It's to change you. No phones, no drugs, no cigarettes, no nada. If you want to stay here in the home. Oh, I don't want to give that up. Well, then go back out there in the street. That's right. Why? Because you need to go out there if you don't want to give it up. I ain't going to do nothing for you in here. Well, we, we can't do nothing for you in here. We can't help you. Why? Because you don't want to be helped. That's right. Yeah. I talked to a guy the other day over there. He was leaving. I said, come on over here, brother. What are you doing? Oh, I got a, a medical condition. And, and it was fasting day. Go figure. He was leaving the home over a ramen noodle. <laughs> a ramen noodle. The most cheapest thing you can buy at the store. A ramen noodle. He was leaving the home over a ramen noodle. And it wasn't even a ramen noodle. It's because it was fasting day. And he wanted that ramen noodle. And they told him, no. I got a medical. Yeah, the Lord wants to heal you of that medical condition. You know why you got that condition? Because you've been doing all them drugs and all that stuff. That's why you got it. And God wants to heal you of that. Now we're going to read verses 8 through 11. And again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. And then check this out. Then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. Now you see all these people, you know what I mean, that are enticed with with, with wealth. You know, a lot of these, these, these artists... Man, they, they, have, they get all this money thrown at them. You know, you don't have to literally, you know, this is a lot of people that have the misconception. Oh, I sell my soul to the devil. You don't have to say you sell your soul to the devil. It's not in what you say, it's in your action. That's right, that's right. What has a hold of you? Now, if you will give all, everything up and turn away from everybody over some riches, but guess what? You just sold your soul to the devil. That's right. That's right. We are also led astray when we are consumed with what the world has to offer more than what God has for us. 
what the world has to offer. We're always competing with the Joneses or with our friends and with our neighbors and stuff like that. Man, I remember my, my old neighbor when I lived in, in Wheat Ridge in the townhouse, my Troy and, and his wife, Leslie. She used to get so mad at him because he wanted everything that I had. Everything that I had, he wanted. Tell me, let me know when you're going to sell it. Tell him, hey, man, I got these battle golf clubs, man. You want to buy these golf clubs? Well, I ain't golf no more. Title is, man, top of the line, man. I'll give them to you for a good price. I want them. You come buy them, payments, whatever. Leslie be all mad. <laughs> Stop buying stuff from him. Ah! Well, my stereo systems I used to have. I had three big old competition subwoofers in my Impala. $3,000 a piece, each, each subwoofer. I told him, man, I can't have those anymore, man. I'm going deaf, man. I just want one. That's it. I'm selling the other ones. <laughs> I want it. How much? Give me 200 bucks for it. They're worth more than that. Just give me 200 There she goes on that. What are you doing? Buy stuff from... Ah! Our brother Dave, when we went to the mountains, to the men's retreat, went to a place and got a hamburger, a $20 hamburger. <laughs> He ordered after he ordered after me. He said, "Man, I want the same thing Pastor had. Twenty dollar ham. What do you mean twenty dollar hamburger? I never even heard of a twenty dollar hamburger, huh? <laughs> Things that we do, you know what I mean? And man, I'm telling you, we 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 always look at what somebody else has or what somebody else is doing, and you know, and it consumes us. Instead of going after, you know, God, God will bless you. Don't tell God will bless you." You know, God will bless you, but there's times, you know, what we're too busy looking at everybody else and wanting what everybody else has and the things of the world instead of what God wants for us. Amen. Haven't you noticed how so many people just can't get enough? They always want more and more, and they're never happy with just the necessities of life. Lord, help us. You know what? I think we need to go back to a, a simple lifestyle, no matter if we have in abundance or not. Amen, amen. You know, half of the food in our refrigerators we usually throw away while other people are just hoping to have some of the stuff that we have in our refrigerators. I mean, there's so many people out there, whether they care to admit it or not, they desire to have this type of, uh, of, of preaching and, and teaching and the, and, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, but yet they just they go out and do what everybody else has out there because they want to be a part of the, of the world. Man, the, necess the necessities. I remember us Hispanics always used to say, beans and rice in Jesus Christ. That's all I need. Beans and rice in Jesus Christ. And that was for real. Why? Because all we had was beans and rice. And if you didn't have Jesus Christ, you didn't have nothing. Beans and rice and Jesus. My frijoles again? Huh? <laughs> How you thought? Huh? Frijoles again? Man, beans again? Yeah, cometelo. Callate. Put some pepper on them today and tomorrow put salt. Huh? Maybe next day you put cheese. Huh? Little sprinkle of chile the next day. They're different beans every day. Huh? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying, man. The simple things. But, man, what we complain. You know what, man? I'm telling you. I've, I've, been, I've been to every restaurant just about from Denver all the way over here, man, and Nothing's good, especially here in Brighton. Yes. Man, McDonald's and Burger King ain't even good over here. Man, I remember, I, man, I used to love Burger King. I hate Burger King. Oh, my gosh. I just, man, there's just so many things, and we've been so spoiled, but there ain't nothing good out there. You know, you go home, and you make you something simple. Some simple, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm like, oh, wow. I go grab a tortilla and put some butter on it. Or you just warm up a tortilla, man. Just eat a piece of tortilla or a piece of pan, man, a bread. And it's good, man. I'm like, man, this was way better than going and spending $75 or $80. And this was only a dollar for a whole pack. 
Huh? Whole pack. Got tortillas all week. One day butter, one day salt. Huh? <laughs> Oh, man. You know, church, I want you to know that I love you guys. I love you guys, and I, I, just, want, I just want you guys to, to, just to know. I want you to know the real Jesus. Amen. You know, I had an encounter with the Lord in a prison cell. Amen. And I read many different books, and the Lord began exposing things to me and showing things to me and, you know, about different people. And not to say that I don't love them and stuff like that. I still love them. But I had to separate myself. You know, there's so many different denominations out there right now, you know, and everything's so jacked up. You know, people call themselves Catholics and, you know, Presbyterians and Muslims. And, you know, everybody has a different religion. And everybody has their own take on what they think. And, you know, it has nothing to do with the Word of God. Amen. You know, we got, we got Pentecostals, you know, and we're from a Pentecostal background. You know, I, that would never change me to go non-denominational. I'll never go non-denominational. But what it is, is we need to get back to Pentecost. Amen. We need to get back to a biblical church. We need to get back to the Word of God and not what everybody thinks and what they may say. But, you know, if we wanted unity in the church, we would all follow this Word. It wouldn't be about being a Pentecostal. It wouldn't be about being a Baptist. It wouldn't be about being this and we serve Him like this and we serve Him like that. There's only one way to serve Him. There's only one way to serve Him and that's through His Word. His Word, was, His church was found on Pentecost. We need to be... Pentecost people. Amen. I didn't say Pentecost. I said Pentecost people. Amen. People who are indwelt with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the promise of God. Who stand on His Word. Who do not stray from it. Who follow it. Who are a peculiar people. Who are a chosen generation. Who are a royal priesthood. Amen. You know what? I desire more of the Lord. And the more that I read His Word, and the more that I fast, and the more that I pray, and the more that I get closer to Him, the more that I see how much everybody else is off. And that what I've been taught as I was growing up, and, and what people have taught me, has been wrong. Has been wrong. Why? Because it deals with their life. And not the life that God wants us to live. The Bible strictly says, the life that I live, I no longer live for myself, but I live for Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. If you would stand with me here this morning. I just want to pray with all of you before we come up to this altar. And I just want you to know, church, I, I love you. I love you. My heart breaks for your children. My heart breaks for your family members. My heart breaks for you. Because I love you guys. And I want you guys to be all that you are, can be in Christ Jesus. I want you to grow to the fullest. I pray for you. I fast for you. And I want you to know that I love you. I sincerely, sincerely love you. And if I can do anything for you guys, it would be to pray and to fast that God would just use you and empower you in a mighty way. Father, right now, Lord, I just pray, Lord, for the congregation, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for the body of believers, Lord God, that you have placed here, Lord God, to be, Lord God, you know, those, Lord God, that I'm entrusting to, Lord God.
Those, Lord God, that you have called here, Lord God, to be a part of this body, your body, Lord God. We are a family here, Lord God. We are a church here, Lord God. And Lord, we desire to grow, Lord God, closer to you. Father, right now, Lord God, I just pray, Lord God, over each and every single family here and each and every single individual, Lord God, Lord, that they would just be led by your spirit, Lord God, that right now, Lord God, that you would meet every need, Lord God, physically, Lord God, mentally, Lord God, financially, Lord God, spiritually, Lord God, that you would meet every need according to your riches and glory, Lord God. And Lord, right now, as we begin to come up to this altar, Lord God, you speak through us, Lord God, and you allow us, Lord God, to lay down those laden sins or those laden idols, Lord God, that we have held on to. So that way you, Lord God, can strengthen us and transform us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, church. Let's make our way to this altar. Good job, Hita. I usually... Yeah, I just put uh, that one, the one hour, this one right here. Yep.